yes, you are seeing this right. This is Hitman being played on a Chromebook, specifically one from this video sponsor, Asus, and it's their CX-5 line, or the specific one I have is the CX-5500FE, and in this video, I want to show you how to do this, as well as play a load of different games in a load of different ways, so let's get started. Chromebooks, by nature, aren't designed to be gaming machines. They run Chrome OS instead of Windows, and are spec to be thin and light and actually have incredible battery life, which generally isn't the setup that you want for gaming. Despite that, there are actually a whole load of ways to game on this, including some benefits that you actually don't get on a conventional gaming laptop. One of those benefits is that since 2016, Chrome OS machines have been able to natively install Android apps through the standard Google Play Store, which means if you want to play your favorite mobile games on a big screen with a mouse and keyboard or controller, or just with a bit more horsepower, you can fire them up on here. So what game about playing with Android apps would be complete without having some asphalt racing in there? And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's doing pretty decent. Uh, it's, I'm actually recording the screen with the built-in tool, which uh, does limit the, the performance ever so slightly, but it's playing rather well. And uh, even though this, I'm currently playing on the, the touch drive option, which means that all I need to do is hold drift and hold boost, it's still a pretty decent experience and still a good bit of fun. Of course, you can disable the, the touch drive option if you prefer, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good fun. And uh, a good experience on the, the Chromebook as well. Of course, if you would rather play something a little more subdued, but still just as fun, well, I like to play Polybridge, and uh, this is uh, a very similar, if not the same experience as to playing it on desktop, but again, I'm playing it natively on the Chromebook here, and uh, it's playing just as you would expect, including uh, me apparently managing to get a limousine to go around a very, very tight bend, uh, which is kind of remarkable. But uh, there we go, we have completed our bridge uh, with just shy of 100% stress, which is, uh, is, is that exactly what you want as a bridge designer. Of course, playing mobile games while grades isn't quite the same as playing AAA titles. So how can you do that? Well, Google has you covered there too. Thanks to Stadia, you can stream games straight uh, to your machine from wherever you want, as long as you have a good internet connection. And thanks to this ASUS machine rocking Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ac, and ASUS Wi-Fi stabilizer, even over Wi-Fi, you should have a rather good time. So here we have Hitman, as you saw at the start, uh, and uh, we're streaming it from Stadia, uh, as you would expect, and it's playing buttery smooth. This is a 1080p display, and so we're getting the, the full 1080p res, and it's 60 FPS, which makes it ridiculously smooth, which is great. Now, I know what the guy's going to do, so I am going to hide a remote explosive uh, Ideally under this chair, maybe? That, that sounds about right. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it under the floor, why not? Uh, I'm gonna hide my, uh, my, my explosive launcher, uh, and then I'm going to go and trigger him to come and uh, go to this, this secret meeting room, hopefully. Now while we're waiting for uh, our guy to head over to the bit where we just planted some explosives, I can tell you that the game so far has been running a, a locked 60 FPS. It's been ridiculously smooth and uh, considering that this is all streamed remotely and just streamed to, uh, to the, the device, it looks fantastic. There's no blockiness or artifacting uh, and the latency is actually remarkably low. It feels very much like I'm playing it on the machine, which I suppose is kind of the, the key point. Uh, and that's a really good thing. I think that let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I think he's below. That'll work. Target eliminated. Challenge complete. 
I can drop the crowbar so that we uh, we don't have that anymore. And uh, apparently that was an unnoticed kill, uh, which is remarkable because I dropped a massive barrel on his head and on top of someone else. But apparently no one noticed, so it's fine. Well, yeah, that's a pretty decent uh, decent experience. Uh, let's have a quick play on Destiny and see how that plays. So we're in Destiny 2 and uh, it's also a pretty decent experience. You can see there's a little bit more of a sort of blockiness from uh, just being a video stream rather than say your graphics card rendering it natively, but I mean, it's still 60 FPS. It still, still feels pretty smooth and so I can't say that I could uh, I would be complaining too much if this was my you know my actual gaming experience damn that that super is OP <gasps> done already nice yeah it's a, it's a pretty good experience it's uh, it's playing remarkably well and uh, I, I can't say that I would have a problem playing uh, playing this. I mean, you know, I'm not great at it, but I wouldn't have a problem with the performance of playing it. But what if you've already got a gaming PC at home and you just want to play the games that you already own on the hardware you already have? Well, that's where Moonlight comes in. Moonlight is a free open source tool that uses NVIDIA's Shield streaming capabilities to let you stream your games both locally in your home and even over the internet if you've got a good connection. There are some drawbacks to running this, this app, like if you're traveling long distances from your house, you are more likely to have higher latency, whereas, uh, for example, Google Stadia has servers around the world, meaning that you can stream from them at a much lower latency as you're more likely just to just be physically closer. But the power to stream and play your own games, especially when you're at home, is still fantastic. Now, once you get it up and running, which is really easy to do, especially if you're only streaming inside your house or you already have a VPN set up like I do, it's remarkably uh, simple and it's remarkably impressive. We're playing Cyberpunk at 1080p 60 FPS, proper 60 FPS. We're playing it at uh, basically high everything except for ray tracing and you know, we're playing that on a Chromebook and we're playing it pretty much as if it was, as if it was native. It's uh, a very good experience. And uh, I'm just gonna take out the camera. I, I'm really very impressed. I was hoping to be able to get in and out without having uh, being spotted, but I didn't do the best job of that. So I'm going to have to go a bit more guns blazing, but that's fine because you know, that's fun too. Uh, Guy up in the sniper's nest. There's another one there. Can I get him? I think I did. So yeah, again, we're playing Cyberpunk at 1080p ultra settings on a Chromebook, which is still absolutely crazy and a pretty decent experience. But what if you wanted to, say, play a game with a controller, like, say, Rocket League? Well, funnily enough, that works just fine. And uh, you can very easily just hook up any Xbox compatible controller and you are off to the races. Or in my case, uh, I haven't played Rocket League in far too long. Uh, and so I can't quite remember the keybinds as well as I used to. Uh, and so I'm playing with some bots and doing terribly. Right, can I do a basic aerial? No, because I forgot the boost button. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, that was, oh, that was just awful. Um, no, I'm not gonna watch the replay of that. I really can't believe how kind of pretty much flawlessly this is working. Uh, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. I, I can't really say that I notice any extra input lag, which is great and it just means that it's a really good experience, despite obviously not being playing, not playing natively, I suppose, on the, uh, on the machine. Ah, missed. Damn. Of course, all of this is on top of the CX-5 being an already pretty versatile machine. 
It's great for productivity and office work. I actually wrote all of this video script on here. It runs a rather nice and vibrant 15 inch display, which means watching YouTube or movies or TV is a really nice experience. Plus the Harman Kardon speakers also sound pretty great too. That display also folds all the way back, which means especially if you're using a controller, you can actually have this set up like an A-frame with just the screen visible, or if you want to use it more like a tablet for browsing the web, that's fine too. It also features USI stylus support and even includes ASUS's own stylus in the box. So if you do want to use this as a, a drawing surface, well, you can do that too. Considering the price, the versatility, and the variety of ways that you can play games on it, I'm actually rather impressed with Chrome OS and with this CX-5. If you are too, you can find out more about it at the link in the description below. And I want to thank ASUS for sponsoring this video and for supporting the channel. And of course, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative, or just a bit of fun. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you have any thoughts on gaming on a Chromebook, the CX-5 or the video in general, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I have a whole load of other videos on the end cards you can check out if you want to keep watching. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.